Do you know that the cost of hackers to U.S. businesses in 2014 was $445 billion is what they cost U.S. firms. 400 and... Half a trillion bucks. Pretty phenomenal, isn't it? Just a little bit, yeah. Just a little bit, <laughs> yes. So if you're not taking this seriously or if you have a company or a business out there and, and you're just thinking that, well, hey, uh, we think we're covered. There's no such thing as thinking you're covered. Even if you're doing things that you might say are, are part of your active strategy, we're going to share some things here with you today that might just blow your mind and get you to think a little bit more seriously about security for your business, for your networks, etc. So let's talk about who some of the actors, who, who some of the people involved are. Obviously, you can have what's called a lone wolf. And that's the individual who works on their own. They're, they may do, be doing it for the purpose of self-gain, but sometimes just to be malicious. Then, of course, you have these hacking groups. And, yeah, we'll go to the other graphic there. Sometimes you have these uh, hacking groups. And the um, th these people are actually involved in stealing data from people on a number of different levels. But there's groups like this, like all around our country, then there are what are called state-sponsored hackers, and these are people who are representing either a foreign government or from foreign countries. And then, like it or not, we actually even have people within our own systems, our own governments, that do this stuff as well. And they get busted all the time for it. But anyway, um, so the, the people come from a lot of different levels, and the problem is only getting worse. You know, it's kind of an interesting thing here, Kyle, is looking at the, the cost to a hacker of running something like uh, ransomware or what they call DDoS. It's a, di a distributed denial of service. But that's what randomware or ransomware is, rather, is that they basically steal the, the, the they take over your systems, take over your software, they steal all of your data, and for some money, you could potentially get this back. Well, here's a really interesting thing that people should know. Um, Symantec, which is a very common virus protection or security uh, system on people's networks. Do you know that Symantec publicly admitted that there have been hackers working in the background on systems covered by Symantec for as much as 30 months before they're discovered? How much stuff do you think you're losing while your so-called protections are in place and organization like Symantec isn't exactly covering you. And you know, ransomware, we've heard of all these different uh, uh, names that they use for ransomware. Um, Crypto Locker was a really popular one or well-known one, I should say. Not popular, but well-known <laughs> for a while. Um, but do you know why some organizations use ransomware? Well, of course, they can collect some money for stealing somebody's data. But there's another reason why they do this too. Ransomware, they say that it, in, in at least 60 or 70% of the cases where ransomware was used against an organization, it is actually a strategy that's used to clean up any forensic evidence that they had been in your system for all those months prior. So you very likely, if you get hit by ransomware, you have very likely been spied on already for some period of time by a hacker who then used ransomware to clean up their tracks and then just steal all your data, which you have to then pay money to get back. So pretty nasty stuff. You got a couple articles here that you wanted to share, Kyle. Yeah, before I get to that, um, um, so I watch this YouTuber who actually has excess computers. What he does is that he actually infects them with specific like ransomwares and all that, and then mm -hmm. he tries to um, go through the, their firewall and break it and all that, mm -hmm. um, which is actually pretty cool. And there's actually some ransomware, some type of that, where they force you to play video games. Mm -hmm. So like there's one that's like, it's called um, Bullet Hell. Mm -hmm. And basically what it is, it's um, you have a little ship, you're going up, and then all these bullets and all these projectiles are coming at you, and you're supposed to reach a certain high score. And if you don't, you don't get your material back. You don't get any of it back. So they're forcing you to play video games, and it's, you know, it's not for money, but it's just, you know, um, like a laugh. 
<laughs> so there's like other types like that. And um, so people are forced to play video games. That is if people think playing video games to get your data back is worth a laugh. <laughs> well, I know the people that are probably infecting it probably are laughing. But yes. Yeah. So that um, that's a thing. Um, another thing that's pretty um, kind of interesting the government workers prepare for cyber attacks during inaugural war games. Now, these people right here are a team of coders who go. I love the dark hoodies, by the way. They all look like hackers. I know. That's kind of. They fit the part. I know. You think that's like their uniform? Like they go to work like that? <laughs> I don't know, but it's a great picture for the article. Casual Fridays, just yes. like they take the hood off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so basically, there's this motorized like Lego city, and they're supposed to hack into it while another government, another country, are trying to um, stop them from doing it. And it's like a little game. So it's like Olympics, but just mm -hmm. for coding. That's kind of cool. Um, so they trying to attack and trying to get into it, control it, while the other one's trying to defend it, and they take turns with doing that. Um, so they can kind of see how well the other people are doing. The message to business people out there is, as you see games like this going on, these are people who are keeping their hacking skills sharp every single day and improving on them every single day. And if you've been sitting on your network or your so-called network security and you aren't ha doing, taking regular steps to make sure that you're safe and secure, um, there can be all kinds of things that are happening behind the scenes and protection that may have worked last year or even in the last six months doesn't necessarily work today. Um, do you know some businesses actually pay hackers, like hire them to hack into their systems to figure out where their weak spots are? To look for the loopholes. Yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah. Um, some major companies that I will bring up. So like in 2011, <clears throat> PlayStation got hacked. Mm -hmm. um, and... 2016 PlayStation got hacked <laughs> in 2000. I believe this is 17. Yeah. In 2017 PlayStation and Xbox got hacked. Um, and in 2017 um, hackers hacked into PlayStation network and Xbox network and stole $2.2 million from people. Mm -hmm. um, back like maybe 10 years ago you'd go to the you know like a GameStop or a mm -hmm. store like that maybe blockbusters and you go in you buy a video game and you got a hard disk and that's your game right now there's a bit there's another option that it, you can go onto your PlayStation or Xbox and buy and download games right there using mm -hmm. a credit card mm -hmm. while well, all your information is right there so hackers can just go right in and take it mm -hmm. um so and that's what they're doing absolutely so as technology gets more and more advanced people are it's hard to catch up mm -hmm. so um, we're progressing and we're trying to just keep security up as we're going along um, so that's a problem with how fast security is going um, yeah. so one of the questions is in all of this people are aware of artificial intelligence and the advancements that are taking place in artificial intelligence and the question is 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 artificial intelligence actually playing a role in these types of cyber threats? And the answer resoundingly is yes. Let me give you just a, a, a couple of pieces of information here. Two data scientists from security firm Zero Fox conducted an experiment to see who is better at getting Twitter users to click on malicious links. Either humans sending out, you know, messages they were putting or artificial intelligence creating messages and sending them out as well. Well, the researchers taught an AI to study the behavior of social network users and then design and implement its own phishing and not phishing as in, but the pH kind of phishing. In tests, the artificial hacker was substantially better than the human competitors. So using AI to, to pull these people in and composing and distributing more phishing tweets than humans at a substantially better conversion rate. And here's what happened. The AI named snap underscore R sent simulated spear phishing tweets to over 800 users at a rate of 6.75 tweets per minute and lured 275 victims into getting, um, into, into being taken advantage of here by tweets set over Twitter, 275 out of 800. Isn't that crazy? Now I would think, you know, if 10 or 20 fell for 
that, that would be pretty phenomenal. But 275. It says, by contrast, uh, Forbes staff writer Thomas Fox Brewster, who participated in the experiment, was only able to pump out 1.075 tweets a minute, just making 129 attempts. But he still got 49 people out of 129, got 49 people to respond. But his rate of conversion was lower and the amount of tweets you could set out per minute were much lower. Artificial intelligence can be weaponized for cyber threats. Skynet. We got? Um, Skynet. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah, pretty, pretty crazy. So be aware of all that, uh, all those things happening out there. Now, um, th there's a few steps that you can take in your organization or a few things to be aware of. So let's talk about those. So there's all kinds of uh, people like within their systems that, and even on your home computers, where you may have either unneeded services, apps, and or programs that are still running and or operating on your computer systems. And these can be operating on your networks. So this seems really simple and seems like something you have to be able to catch up on like very easily, but shut down any software, any apps, any programs that you aren't currently using, get rid of them and reduce your exposure. Don't be running things that aren't needed. Um, a second one, thoroughly evaluate both internal and external vulnerabilities. And a lot of times this takes, you know, if you have a um, IT provider or somebody that you're already working with that you trust, get somebody in to evaluate your vulnerabilities because um, there's a number of ways that you could be exposing yourself. First of all, and which people should be aware of if they're not, you can have problems with employees leaking and or stealing information. Um, that's one of them. You need to evaluate how vulnerable you are from the inside. Um, another one is employee laptops that leave the building. They hook up to other networks or unsecured internet. They come back to the workplace and what happens? They bring bugs and things like that back with them on their computers, hook back up to the network, and uh, you've just introduced another problem to your business network. And this is happening all the time. I mean, who's not traveling from work if you have a work uh, laptop? Who's not traveling from work, you know, going to an airport, hopping on a plane, traveling to some other city, being at a motel, hotel somewhere, coming back later, and now you're hooked up to your own network again with that same laptop. So. A lot of different ways that that occurs. Um, the third thing here is understanding what data you have that must be protected and what protections are available. Now, be aware of the fact when I say what protections are available. Um, organization like Symantec, as I mentioned earlier, um, many people, many businesses have Symantec either on their computers or on their networks. And Symantec admitted publicly not long ago that there have been hackers and people in the systems protected by Symantec for up to 30 months before they discovered they were even there. That's a long time. <laughs> even a month would be phenomenal. But 30 months? Pretty crazy how long somebody can be on your network stealing data from you and you have no idea what you've lost. And the whole time you thought you're protected because you had some software, antivirus software and things like that in place, firewalls, etc. And you thought you were covered. So, you know, the, the interesting thing here, Kyle, is you might ask and people might wonder, um, what is promoting these hackers to go and do this sort of thing and be these so-called bad actors? Well, it's pretty simple. The They say that the... Uh, a DDoS, which is the distributed denial of service type attack. So this is like a ransomware attack that to launch one of these attacks on a organization causes costs the hacker and the hacker group about 38 bucks an hour to launch these types of attacks. You know what their payoff is? Around 40000 per hour is what they make from doing this. So a $38 an hour cost and a 40,000 per hour reward. Now just think about business in general, like who wouldn't take advantage of that little scenario? People say, you know, you have to make, use money to make money. Mm -hmm. You just need a tiny, tiny bit 
for such a huge outcome. That is very... Yes, the hackers are not going to stop doing what they're doing because at 40000 an hour and a $38 an hour cost, oh yeah, anybody and any everybody who doesn't, you know, has a low threshold when it comes to ethics and everything else and has some familiarity with these, which most people who are, whether, you know, talking about gamers and things like that, most of these people are actually much more savvy when it comes to computers and computer networks than are the business people that are using them. No wonder these people are are cracking into these systems. And as I shared right in the beginning of all of this, um, we haven't even seen an updated number yet, but the the cost to U.S. companies in 2014 was $445 billion with a B dollars to U.S. firms. And I've seen like some of the recent data, they show that uh, companies that end up getting hacked, now we're talking about businesses, companies that end up getting hacked, on average, cost them somewhere around $15.4 million when they get hacked. That's a price tag that uh, most businesses cannot survive or endure. Um, the, the loss can be catastrophic and put you right out of business getting hacked once. So pretty crazy. Do you know that on a, on a global scale, two of the biggest uh, industry sectors that get hacked all the time are financial services and energy. And on the average annual cost to financial services, 13.5 million. And to the energy sector is 12.8 million, respectively. Every single year, that's the kind of bill they're ringing up um, just in those two sectors so it's crazy all the different ways that they're hacking sometimes if you wonder why your electric bill might be up a little <laughs> that's a that's a big bill to uh cover in the way of uh hacking you think they'd want to put a little more attention on making sure they're secure when i was in high school i took a coding class and the um, the teacher told us about that um she's going to give us the tools to pretty much you know do whatever we'd like um but she's also trusting us that we wouldn't, you know, learn to hack people. And, mm -hmm. you know, she's basically just giving us the key to the world, basically. Mm -hmm. And she's trusting us with that. She had a colleague who his ideology, the way he felt was, I mean, if I can hack it, technically it's their fault. Mm -hmm. So why shouldn't, it, why should I get in trouble for it? That's, that was his ideology. He went to jail, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, that was his ideology. Um, yeah, and I feel, I think I remember one of my, one person from my class or the class before me actually got in trouble for um, hacking elderly people and stealing their um, account and stealing all their stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so it's actually, it can happen to anyone. Like this guy was just like, everyone loved him. He was just like this happy look go lucky guy. Like mm -hmm. he's pretty popular but you know he's still money from elderly people online it was just a lot of people can do it a lot of people it's not like regular you go up to someone hey I have a gun give me money instead it's just like online and you just don't even know the person mm -hmm. it's completely anyone can practically do it mm -hmm. um, yeah it's 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 new it's the new world of it's the new world and it's becoming a bigger deal all the time. And that's what people should be aware of. The fact that uh, it may or may not happen in, you know, uh, any, any typical business or organization that's out there and saying, well, we've never been hacked to date. <laughs> yeah, that's a really bad thing to get complacent about and start thinking that your security is OK. So cybersecurity, cyber threats, take it uh, seriously or pay the price and the price is huge and there's more people out there, more and more people every single day that are willing to bear a $38 an hour expense for a $40,000 an hour payoff because that's what hackers are making. That's why they're doing what they're doing. All right, so what else?